In the previous video, we've seen how to calculate the transfer matrix of a combination of ducts of different cross-section. That's useful, but that's not sufficient to design an effective silencer. We need one more ingredient, and in general term, what we need is the possibility to create derivations in the network of ducts. And we're going to do that in very general terms. Suppose we have two ducts, one on the left side, one on the right side, that connect. Uh, so the end of duct 1 is cross-section 1, the beginning of duct 2 is cross-section 2. But in between, we want to place one very general component. So part of the sound wave is going to go through cross-section 3, and behind uh, cross-section 3 we have an undefined component but that is defined in very general term by its acoustical impedance Z3. How can we create a relationship between cross-section 1 and cross-section 2? Just as a reminder, I'm assuming that these three cross-sections are infinitely close. It's just that uh, I look at the problem from different uh, viewpoints, but there's no distance between cross-section 1, 2, and 3. And so the pressure at the three cross-section must be equal. I have P1 equal P2 equal P3. And in terms of velocity, the acoustic flux coming in through cross-section 1 must be divided between what goes through cross-section 2 and what goes through cross-section 3, so that I have that S1 times V1 is equal to S2 times V2 plus S3 times V3. But there's one more equation. I said that what is behind cross-section 3 has a certain impedance Z3 that is given, and so I have another relationship, which is that P3 is equal to Z3 times V3. If I put all that together, it's quite easy to see that I obtain a matrix relationship between cross-section 1 and cross-section 2, which is on the first line 1, 0, and on the second line I have the cross-section change S2 over S1, but I also have a coupling between uh, P, uh, velocity 1 depends both on the pressure P2 and on velocity V2, and the other uh, uh, coefficient is S3 divided by Z3 uh, times S1. So we have a very general formula that, of course, we have to apply to practical uh, cases. And one practical case is the following. If you look under the hood of an engine, you very often see components like these on the uh, in intake or air admission uh, system. So we just have the main uh, sound waves going through this very large uh, duct, but we have one part that will go th through that little duct that is closed on one side that is called a quarter wavelength resonator. Well, we know the impedance of a simple duct. We have calculated that when we looked at resonances. And we know that uh, the, the, the impedance of a simple duct of length L is equal to my, minus I rho C cosine KL over sine KL. So that the transmission, uh, the, sorry, the uh, transfer matrix uh, that connects the the acoustic variable in the cross-section just before the acoustic resonator and just after the acoustic resonator is given by the expression, expression that I'm uh, showing uh, now. Um, and so it involves a tangent KL and so you can see from there that there are some values of this which some frequency for which this is going to be zero and some frequencies for which it is going to be uh, infinite. A quarter wavelength is a very efficient way of eliminating one well-defined frequency component in the signal. Suppose a wave is uh, propagating down the, the duct and reaching the uh, quarter wavelength resonator with a certain phase phi. Part of the wave is going to travel up the quarter wavelength resonator and because the length has been tuned to be at that frequency exactly equal to a quarter of a wavelength, it is dephased by 90 degrees. It, it goes through a quarter of a wavelength, so a quarter of a cycle, and so it is dephased by 90 degrees. 
At the end of the, the, the quarter wavelength resonator, the wave is reflected. It is again shifted by 90 degrees. So that when it comes back from where it started, it is defaced by 180 degrees. And so we have a cancellation of the wave coming down the duct and the wave that has traveled up and down the quarter wavelength resonator so that nothing uh, propagates down the, the, the duct. So uh, it's interesting, of course, to be able to calculate the effect of such a resonator on the global uh, transmission. Um, there is another type of resonator that you also find, and you see it on the picture on uh, intake uh, lines, and it's called a, a Helmholtz resonator. The principle uh, of a Helmholtz resonator is different. You see that it is made of a cavity, a large cavity uh, with a volume V that is connected to the duct through a, a neck that has a certain height, H, and a certain cross-section S. And in fact, when the wave is going to uh, tr go past the opening of the Helmholtz resonator, the, the little volume of air that is contained in the neck is going to oscillate uh, uh, on top of the uh, big volume, which will act like a spring. So we have in fact an acoustic mass spring system. The air in the neck is the mass and the uh, compressible air inside the volume is the, um, uh, the, 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 the spring. So in the video I'm not going to detail how we can uh, reach this uh, conclusion, but this system has a resonance frequency C which is given by C over 2 pi times the square root of S over HV. S is the cross-section of the neck, V the volume of the cavity, H the height of the neck, and C the speed of sound. And in terms of impedance, one can demonstrate that the impedance of a Helmholtz resonator is given by the expression that I give. So once again, uh, using the transfer matrix, the general transfer matrix we have obtained for a derivation, in that derivation we can place different types of components and two examples are a quarter wavelength resonator or a Helmholtz resonator. But once again, thanks to the transfer matrix method, you can easily calculate the effect of such components on the efficiency of the total filter. One last thing about um, derivations. Um, very often in silencers, you have the following uh, situation. You have the inlet tube that protrudes into uh, the larger tube, both on the inlet side and on the outlet side. What is the purpose of this? Well, it's actually each time creating a, a resonator. Uh, the sound wave that travels through the inlet duct when it reaches the end of the duct, will separate and part of the wave will go forward, but part of the wave will go backward in the annular duct that is between the large duct and the small duct, so a, a, an annular duct with cross-section S2 minus S1, will travel backward until it reaches the wall and then it will be reflected. So that in practice, the system that is depicted here can be seen as a duct, a derivation, a second duct, a derivation, and an outlet uh, duct. The derivation has a length L2 uh, and a cross-section uh, S2 minus S1 on the left side, and on the right side it has a cross-section S2 minus S3 and a length L4. So it's an easy way to create resonators in a system and you see that even in this very simple configuration you have a large number of parameters S1, S2, S3, L1, 2, L5. So you have eight different parameters that you can play with to optimize the transfer matrix between the inlet and the outlet.